This is the scene in large parts of London this evening. I'm here in Hackney, East London, where the streets are full of police and other streets are full of rioters and looters. Just about 100 metres behind me, uh, a car is on fire. The air here is full of acrid smoke. You might be able to hear the police helicopters circling above me as police try to get control of the situation. There are about 150 people in the street just around the corner. We went round there, but we judged that it was too dangerous to stay. In fact, we could hear people behind us talking about which part of the camera was the most valuable and which bit they would try to get off us. So we beat a hasty retreat uh, from there. Down there, there is a, a car, certainly a car, but possibly several on fire. And it's not just here in Hackney. There has been violence in Brixton, and it's also spreading out now to other parts of the country. Uh, Croydon, which is probably about 30 miles away from London, uh, big parts of Croydon are on fire. And we're hearing that the violence has already also spread uh, right to Birmingham. Uh, there are all sorts of people on the streets here, but it is largely being perpetrated by ethnic minorities, it has to be said, and there's a lot of unrest. This is the night number three, and this is certainly the worst violence that we've seen so far. It hasn't been confined to the hours of darkness. It started at about three o'clock this afternoon and has escalated from there. Uh, this, as I say, has been going on for three nights, and today I've been visiting the parts of London that had so far been affected. And here's my report from some of those areas. London's burning. Rioters and police take over the capital for a third night as looters target yet more areas of London in a spiralling cycle of violence. On Monday night, the violence showed few signs of abating. In fact, it spread further around the city to here in East London, in Hackney, where rioters set fire to cars and tried to break into more shops. Meanwhile, terrified residents of London could do nothing but look on. Police seal off streets and treat whole areas as crime scenes, with local communities trying to come to terms with the wave of looting engulfing North, East and South London. In Enfield, raiders looted shops, making off with whatever they could carry. In nearby Edmonton, a man was stabbed. South in Brixton, rioters threw rocks at police. And in Tottenham, where it all began, the high street is a burnt-out shell. The police, the job centre, the banks, everything that's happening, the recession, you know, there's a lot of anger about that. No jobs, nothing for the youths to do. So, yeah, frustration and anger, you know, and it, 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 it is sad that it's the, it's the poor people that's suffering. It was sparked by the fatal shooting by police of this man, Mark Duggan. Tottenham wants answers about why and how he was killed. But his shooting was just the spark in an exceptionally dry tinderbox. Tottenham and other London boroughs have long been simmering with resentment towards the police, towards social injustice and towards unemployment. This is a community which is under fantastic pressures by high levels of unemployment. They're now losing jobs, they're losing services, youth clubs are being closed down. There is never any excuse for violence. But the community was a tinderbox and the worries and concerns in the community about the death of Mark Duggan were the spark which lit a fire. Tottenham has one of the highest unemployment rates in London, particularly amongst the young. Black people are far more likely to be stopped and searched by police than whites. And together with Hackney, Brixton, Walthamstow and Lewisham, which also saw violence, it's become a victim of what Prime Minister David Cameron is now calling failed multiculturalism. This um, borough has allowed so many ethnic groups and they've put these ethnic groups into sort of like a ghettos. You know, they've put them all there. They do not respect our English ways, and I'm proud to be an Englishman. There's one of a few that are probably now in this borough. I know I'm, I'm not a racist by any means, but I do think you know something should be done. Um, you know about the way. Don't bring your standards of living to this country because it's not my standards. Unless these gangs of youths tire of the violence, there doesn't seem to be a real reason why this looting should stop. It's unlikely the perpetrators have jobs to go to and schools out for the summer. London residents fear more unrest on the streets in the coming days.
The looters aren't making a political point and hardly anyone in these communities supports them. But many are saying that there actually is a political point, that social integration in parts of the country is deplorable, social mobility is nil and the relationship with the police is as bad as it's been for years. And with cuts in government spending looming over the next few years, the situation's very unlikely to get any better. Laura Emmett, RT, Hackney, East London.